solve the differential equation. F double prime equals x to the minus 1 half plus 1. F prime of 9 equals 7. F of 4 equals 32 over 3. So the main idea behind all this is if I take the antiderivative of the second derivative, I get the first derivative. If I take the antiderivative of the first derivative, I get the original function back. So what we're going to do here is we're going to apply integration twice to the second derivative. And since we're given actual values for f prime and f, we'll be able to solve out the constants of integration to get ourselves to a final function completely in terms of numbers. So let's take a look. So I start off with my first derivative is going to be equal to the antiderivative of the second derivative, which is what we're given. My rule for taking the antiderivative, we add 1, gives me a half, flip it over, gives me a 2. Antiderivative of 1 is just x. The rule is if I take the antiderivative of a constant, we just take that constant, multiply it by x. And then we add our constant of integration, which I'll call c1, since we'll have a c2 later on. What we're given, though, is that if I take the first derivative and evaluate at 9, I get 7. If I put that into the function we just obtained, I'm going to put 9 into here. Square root of 9, which is 9 to the 1 half, gives me a 3. So I have 2 times 3 gives me 6, plus 9, plus c1. But that has to be equal to 7. So what we're going to have is 7 equals 6 plus 9, which is 15, plus c1. I move the 15 to the other side. So we get c1 equals 7 minus 15 equals minus 8. So this is going to be the equation for our first derivative. We should check our answer just to make sure we haven't flubbed anything. If I take the derivative of this, I should get the second derivative. So we bring down the 1 half, cancels out the 2. Subtract 1 off the exponent gives me the x to the 1 half minus. And then the derivative of x is going to give me a 1. Derivative of 8 is 0. So we wind up with x to the minus half plus 1, which is what we had for our second derivative. Next, I stick 9 into here. We expect that we should get 7 out of that. So let's check. If I put 9 in here, I get 2 times 9 to the 1 half. That's 3, so this is going to give me 6. Plus 9 gives me 15. Minus 8 gives me 7. So this is the correct first derivative. We proceed to get f. We're going to take the antiderivative of f prime, and then we'll get rid of the constant. So f prime, we just found that's 2 to the x to the 1 half plus x minus 8. So let's take the antiderivative of this. I add 1 to 1 half, gives me 3 halves. Flip it over, gives me 2 thirds, times 2 gives me 4 thirds. Any derivative of x, remember x is x to the 1, so we add 1 and we get 2. So we're looking at a square. Flip the square over and we get 1 half out in front. Any derivative of a constant, 8, is just going to be 8 times x, so I get minus 8x. And then we add in our second constant of integration, and we'll call it c2. So we want to figure out what c2 is, so I'm going to use two equations. We know that f4 is going to be equal to 32 thirds by our assumptions, but we can also get it by following our nose if we stick it into the equation we just solved for. So I put 4 in, I have 4 thirds 4 to the 3 halves. The way I separate that out is to first take the 1 half on the inside, 3 on the outside. So that'll become 4 to the 1 half, which is 2. Cubed gives me an 8. So we have 4 thirds times 8, which is 32 over 3. I go to my next term. I put a 4 into here. That gives me 4 squared, gives me 16 times 1 half. That's going to give me 8 also. 
I go to the next term, I put a 4 in, 8 times 4 gives me 32, and then C2 just hangs around, and then we see what happens. So what do we have? We have 32 halves minus 24 plus C2, but we knew that was originally by assumption 32 over 3. So the 32 over 3's cancel out, and then I can push the 24 to the other side, giving me C2 equals 24. I put that in for my equation here, and we get as a final answer, f of x equals 4 thirds x to the 3 halves, plus a half x squared, minus 8x, plus 24. Of course, we want to check this. So if I take the derivative of this, I bring the 3 halves down. That gives me 4 times 3 over 2 times 3, which is just going to give me 2. So that's 2 times x to the 1 half plus 2 comes down, we drop an exponent, 2 cancels that out, so we have just x to the 1 power, which is just x, derivative of 8x is just 8, derivative of 24 is 0, and we notice what comes out is the derivative that we were promised, 2x to the 1 half plus x minus 8. If I stick 4 into here, we're expecting to get 32 thirds out. So, 4 into this, well, 4 to the 3 halves, remember, we do the half first, so that gives me a 2. I raise that to the third power, gives me an 8, so I get 32 thirds. Put 4 into here, that's going to be 16, divided by 2 gives me 8. This is going to be minus 32, and then plus 24. You'll notice 8 plus 24 is 32, so all these terms go out, leaving me with 32 thirds as promised.